locusts. The plague locust periodically ravages vast areas of eastern Australia. Researchers from the CSIRO Division of Entomology have carried out a 10-year study of these large grasshoppers. In the laboratory, animals are raised to study their growth, what they eat and their reproduction. Nitrogen gas is used as an anaesthetic. Work in the laboratory helps to understand the individuals, although the most interesting feature of the locust is the way it behaves in the field. Huge swarms build up and travel large distances quite quickly. When they reach green plants like crops or grass, they can do serious and costly damage. Under the microscope, their age and the food they have eaten is studied. Although large by insect standards, locusts fly relatively slowly, so they need wind assistance to cover the great areas they travel. The object of this research is to develop forecasts for plague cycles. From central New South Wales to breeding grounds in southern Queensland to large-scale attacks on riverina irrigation areas, they travel hundreds of miles. To track their path, as they fly mostly at night, radar is being used. From uh, the southeast into areas in Queensland where we've had rain, and um, this season we seem to have, we are, we're likely to have a lot in the northwestern plains, and we could get another big migration if there's any depressions that bring rain anywhere in this area. This month we should run from here up through Kinnabarabra and Narrabri, Gundawindi, St George, I think Roma, probably Charleville, and come back on our track through Tanamala, Burke, and here. And then at the beginning of November we should continue it, I think, and we'll go right out to Tipperborough and up through the Channel Country to Windora and then Longreach and come back through Quilby, Sarganinda, Hungerford, and then home again to Burke. Get an idea of how many are likely to be in that area, which, if there are a lot, might uh, act as a source area for migrants moving west. And that should cover the, the situation pretty well. If we should find very large numbers here, and if we're going to get rain anywhere out in these areas, the same sort of system that brings the rain might result in a long-range migration of young locusts into these areas and breeding and more build-up of in numbers, which ultimately could start moving south. At sunset, the locusts begin to fly and the CSIRO scientists are using a type of marine radar which can detect individual animals or a swarm. The locusts move together along weather fronts. The flight patterns are recorded using stop-motion photography. Locusts climbing in a swarming circle. The radar means that the night migrations can now be followed. Lines of locusts move with the wind behind them. 